so you finally got around to taking yourself a decent photo and you know that it does exactly what you want it to do but what the hell are you supposed to do to make google and wordpress happy with you to make sure that you actually get what you need so it's optimized okay today what we're going to be doing is when we're looking at seven things that you need to do with unfortunately pretty much every photo to make sure that you can do it but this easy checklist can make it so much easier for you guys to make sure that you can just tick it off okay make sure that you're using the right format that you're sizing it correctly that you're calling it the right thing and you're helping it so that everybody can see your images the best possible way if you're new here hi i'm robin from robin's academy and i quite literally help you take photos that you're proud to share and in today's case, make sure that people can actually see it. Optimizing your images is absolutely imperative when it comes to the day-to-day -day things of photography. So whether you are uploading a screenshot for your latest blog post, or you are a photographer and you want the world to see your work, we have to go through these seven steps. So make sure you hit subscribe and ideally save this. So that you can come back to it every time you've forgotten the wonders that is. Because let's face it, we can't remember everything. So first thing you need to do is you need to pick the right format to actually shoot it in. And this all comes down to the camera that you're actually using it. Saving your, uh, your image into the correct file format is huge. Quite literally because it can create huge files. So... Picking the right format, it all comes down to where are you going to use it. And I honestly recommend that you check out this table down below, okay, to make sure that you are picking the right format for the use that you are going to use it for. Yes, your icons, your graphics, your logo, your uh, profile picture, your favourite shot of a product, these all need to be formatted in a different slight just slightly different way to make sure that you're optimizing it to the best ability because some images need to have more detail and therefore require a larger file while other things that aren't necessarily as important can definitely be brought down a peg or two to something as simple as a jpeg or png but picking the right one depends on your use so make sure you check that out down below and don't go anywhere okay we still have six more steps Okay, so the second thing you need to think about, just like I said to you before, is that size issue. Size makes a massive role in terms of how quickly people view it. Ideally, you want to keep it as small as possible so things load quicker and obviously people get to see it. However, there is a balancing act here because you do need to balance out quality over quantity in terms of its size. And there has to be that balancing act dependent on what you're using. Again, I've done a little table for you to help you out with this okay make sure you check it out the big thing when it comes to things like wordpress and your blog post um if you're using any images on a website then realistically you're probably going to compress those images to make it easier now there's two types of um, image compression out there there's lossly and lossless and therefore you have to decide again quantity over quality um the smaller the image a lot of the time can be dependent on the, the the size of it in terms of how much you've compressed it down. Lastly, it is obviously going to take that quality out and it's something that you need to consider when you're choosing your optimizing compression software. Personally, I use Image Optimize on the Mac and it works absolutely fine. Um, we don't have any major issues and I put a really big because you can choose what compression rate you want based on the image that you're doing, making it very good for you to kind of pick and choose which ones you want to do in a particular way. Need to know this stuff. Uh, obviously, when you save it in a particular format, you're going to have to call it something. Calling it image, M-I-G slash 4262, you don't know what it is and neither does anybody else. Picking the right name for your file can make a difference. What I would say is go with quite a literal OCD approach with this, what is it? Quite literally, what is this image of? It also helps for things like adding things like your alt tags, because adding an alt tag can really help people who have visual impairment. Now, as you guys, if you've hung out with me, you know long enough that I'm very big on making sure that we include as many people as we can. 
um, whether you are you know destined to be challenged in other areas of your life the thing that you really need to do is to make sure that you're helping people out you want all kinds of people to be able to see your images and that's no different just because it's your website to so make sure that you're filling out your alt tag as best you can and quite literally just sit there and think if I was describing this to somebody what would I put in there okay quite literally a description so if I was doing a description of me right here I would quite literally say a woman wearing a blue top with curly brown hair wearing black glasses you know keep it as literal as you can the idea is it gives them an impression of what the image is without obviously having seen it so try and go into a little bit of a description I don't think it needs to be in grammatically sentenced I think it just needs to be quite literal um again if anyone's got any wonderful tips and tricks on how to do fancy alt tags please drop them in the comments below because we would love to hear from you and I do think it's really nice to hear how other people do things finally one of the big things I would say to you is you need to test that optimization. Testing your optimization to make sure that you aren't having a heavy page can make a big difference. So take the time to actually run a quick speed test to make sure that it's not too big. You can always go back and recompress images and sort those things out. Now, the final two things I'm gonna to say to you is, if you're going to use images that aren't yours, be really, really careful about, and you know me, I'm all for using stock photography. I use canvas all the time. You guys know this. I don't think you need to take a picture every single time, but doing a reverse Google search of an image can make a big difference because you can kind of see how it's been used and who's been using it in other areas which can make a big difference to kind of get the impression of what people think about this because how you see an image isn't how everybody else sees an image and you want to make sure that you're putting the right foot forward use it just use it uh finally uh and this is one step and then you're kind of done it is a make sure the overruns add um your images to a sitemap i know from experience that some of my photography has ended up in pretty good places on google shirts because i followed these seven steps and the blog post itself hasn't necessarily ranked in the same way, but it can be an interesting way to boost your ranking in SEO. So if you do it, people find your image, they might not necessarily find your blog post, they'll then find your blog post and it can make life a little bit more interesting. So it's another way for Google and other people to find you. Plus all of these images can be used in places like Pinterest and social media. So once you've done it, you can then just copy and paste. It is a one once and done. You don't have to stress about this. If you found any of these tips particularly helpful, please hit the like button because, and maybe even subscribe so that you don't miss any of the others, um, because we're always here every week trying to make sure that you make the images that you want. Go check out another, go check out the next one, okay? Trust, trust the algorithm. They know what you wanna watch. <laughs>